From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, this is Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Reidenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us, and coming up today, I'll be talking with Pete Kelly of Salute Vodka, and reviewing this week's top news stories with me will be Julie James and Andy Wiseman. First, the headlines. Fox 31 Denver reports that a proposed merger between Safeway and Kroger could drive up grocery prices in Colorado. The station reports that Kroger, who owns the King Supers chain, is interested in acquiring the Safeway stores that are up for sale. If this happens, Kroger would control 55 to 60 percent of the market, giving it a great deal of influence over grocery pricing in the area. Walmart recently announced it has started its own blog, highlighting company news and addressing issues of concern for suppliers, associates, and consumers. The blog features written posts as well as videos, and some of the most recent posts have focused on Walmart's charitable giving, innovations in transportation logistics, and supplier success stories. Last fall, Walmart announced its plans to ask consumer products suppliers to remove certain potentially harmful chemicals from their product formulations. San Jose Mercury News recently re reported that Walmart has released details of the plan, which requires suppliers to disclose their ingredients by January of 2015 and then begin the process of reformulating products that contain prohibited ingredients. Consumer advocates have noted that this is a huge step forward for Walmart. As a private company, Walmart has more leeway than even the federal government when it comes to designating some ingredients as harmful, thus giving the retailer significant influence over the safety of everyday household, pet, and personal care products. azcentral.com reports on the success of a Dairy Queen store that recently opened inside an area Walmart. The store is a success and its operator couldn't be more pleased, noting that opening a fast food outlet in a Walmart allows the fast food store to concentrate on serving customers with no need to worry about customer parking or bathrooms. In addition, Walmart takes a percentage of the store's earnings instead of charging rent, which reduces cash flow worries for the DQ store. Saturday morning meeting frequent sponsor Samsung recently gave a boost to some of Ellen DeGeneres' favorite charities. The Oscar host used a Samsung phone to take a selfie along with several Oscar winners, then tweeted it and asked the audience to retweet it. Well, the image went viral. Samsung showed its appreciation by making generous donations to the Humane Society and St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Ellen's favorite charities. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as it's reported on walmartnewsnow.com. And we're joined now by our panel, Andy Wiseman from Redwood Ventures and Julie James from Hillshire Brands. Welcome, guys. Julie, the, the start with you today because the big news, Kroger and Safeway have entered into kind of a, or at least there's speculation they're entering into agreement to... Kroger acquire Safeway. Mm -hmm. As a food supplier, what impact do you see? Yeah, as a, as a food supplier for us, that could mean um, some good things for our customers because a lot of times when grocery stores um, become emerge and become larger volume opportunities, that can be a good thing for the shopper. I mean, because they can get better deals and they can leverage their size and that could ultimately then, you know, eventually be good prices, better prices for the shopper. And uh, Kroger has really been on an acquisition mode for the last several years. They mm -hmm. have announced that they intend mm -hmm. to double their size, currently about 2,600 stores. Mm -hmm. They acquired Harris Teeter uh, late last year. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised to see them venturing out west? I mean, they have a strong foothold out west now. Well, they do with Fred Meyer and King Super. And I watched, uh, I watched a news report from Colorado this morning that, that talked about this very thing and how bad it was going to be for consumers. And I was kind of surprised at that. And the, the, the news story left out a couple key things. Number one, what you said, Julie, uh, it doesn't harm consumers. Usually mergers help consumers a lot of times because they drive efficiencies into business and scale that can be leveraged. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Walmart has done very well with that scale in improving the lives of their shoppers. Walmart was left completely out of this story. You know, Walmart has a huge presence out west in Colorado. Uh, specifically. If anything, this just raises the stakes for Walmart to continue to be competitive, maybe even more competitive. Now, yeah. with this merger, obviously yeah. Kroger becomes the big dominant player, certainly number one in the mm -hmm. grocery chain, should this go through and should, I mean, lots of ifs here and yeah. as we wait. What do you think Walmart's immediate reaction will be in those markets, particularly in Colorado, uh, Safeway Strong out west? 
in Texas. But what do you, how do you think Walmart's going to take this? Julie? Well, I know Kroger is very high on the radar list right now. We have um, in, in our company something called a, a purchase or a leakage tree. So Walmart would say, hey, um, if we're not getting all the sales, who are we leaking to? So the leaking term means who, where are the shoppers going? And, and across a lot of categories, you find Kroger is cropping up as like the number one retailer. So in, in the defense mode, I would say even more good news for the shopper because Walmart is not going to let Kroger beat them. So in this area, Colorado probably has a lot to look forward to. Well, and I see Kroger, I mean, Kroger likes to play the high-low game Correct. pretty consistently. So mm -hmm. even with this merger, I see Walmart coming up, certainly on top, because Walmart's going to continue to reinforce CDLC and really be very competitive in, in a lot of those markets. We could expect them to, to uh, you know, accelerate their smaller store presence out west. After all, Safeway, their smaller, mm -hmm. older stores, a lot of them are kind of dilapidated. I grew up with Safeway. Right. Uh, and they're struggling. This is part of why they're an acquisition target. So I would expect that Walmart would respond by, by accelerating their small uh, platforms in, yeah. in those regions. Well, it would be interesting to see if this all, if it all comes out and yeah. if the, the acquisition merger really goes ahead. Yeah. I want to move on to our next topic, which is Walmart announced this week that they're going to mm -hmm. begin to push uh, HBA suppliers, health and beauty aid suppliers, mm -hmm. to, to pull out those harmful chemicals. If you look at, at some of these products, their European counterparts are kind of void of some of those harmful, harmful chemicals. Mm -hmm. Although there's no proof, I think, that that comes in. Julie, you, had an, you have an interesting take on this. Yeah, um, I, I think it's interesting with the, uh, well, ultimately now you're making a natural product. Mm -hmm. And we've seen across lots of categories that natural costs extra. And so for the, sh for the shopper, that means you're going to pay a little extra. And for Walmart, they could probably expect some cost increases because it's not going to be cheap taking out that product. So, you know, I think in the it's, basics category, which anytime consumers are struggling, the basics continue to be a that's focus. That's right. For We're them. talking about soap, cleaning right. chemicals, cleaning mm -hmm. um, products, and uh, makeup was another product they were talking about. So, yeah, their shopper base, um, clearly reasons to go to Walmart. Um, it's going to be interesting when they try to, you know, take something. I guess, well, I don't, don't not even really mentioning exactly what the chemicals are in the product. Right. Um, that That's a cost increase probably getting ready to happen. Well, there's a reason that Burt's Bees and uh, the more people would opt to buy ChapStick over Burt's right. Bees. Burt's Bees being natural, ChapStick, probably some of these chemicals that are handy. Well, we've seen that consumers don't want to pay for uh, organics. A Walmart shopper does not, you know, by and large, support enough business in organics or safer product to justify uh, large scale restrictions on certain products, but there's no transparency here, at least as we see right now, there's no list of chemicals that are being removed. Now, from the toy side, and we manufacture toys, we know what needs to be done, we know how to make a safe product, we meet and exceed not only uh, government regulations, but customer specific regulations, because safety and quality are first concerns, especially mm -hmm. with children. But, but it costs, there's a right. cost, and as you said, yeah. that cost gets carried in the end by consumers. And so uh, my hope is that Walmart will be mindful of the costs along the way uh, mm -hmm. associated with, with reducing uh, certain chemicals that we really don't know what they are yet. Well, and the other thing that I think is a possibility is mm. they reduce the SKU assortment, which we know how that has gone over yeah. historically for them. Yeah. But do they cut SKUs in the HBA category and begin mm -hmm. to limit the facing counts mm -hmm. and bring in Thanks. these as an alternative right. so they maintain that core shopper right. who doesn't care what they're right. buying? and appeal to the higher end well, this, consumer typically. It's, this, it's likely a boon for private label, <laughs> for the yeah. great value, same choice, and, uh, yeah. et cetera, but they better be prepared to make less margin on that because what Procter & Gamble does by way of removing chemicals, so will private label have to do. Okay, we've got about one minute left here. I wanted to get into this real quick because Samsung made a lot of news this last week in the Oscars uh -huh. with the famous retweeted picture that Ellen had, uh, or Ellen was responsible for getting taken uh, with her Samsung phone. <laughs> Andy, I'm coming back to you. Thoughts on that? I don't have a lot of thoughts. Are we sure she was using a Samsung or was it, it was, a Blackberry? It was very prominent <laughs> on there. So yeah. marketing oh, certainly has something to do with it. Yes. What yeah. Do you, think? you know, my take is on it. I, I thought it was uh, pretty clever for mm. for Samsung, and I love when a when a company can take advantage of somebody that does something in their everyday life, like the selfies. It's getting a lot of press, but. Um, just to take some, something very simple in life and, and to maximize it into an advertising opportunity. You know, from that standpoint, it's pretty cool. Well, it cost so them $3 million. Dollars. They're donating yes, to the Yes, but children. in the end, they did something even really cool by donating right. um, a lot of money for the number of selfies, but or the number of tweets that that happened. 
Yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much. We're out of time for now, but stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to sit, sit down with Pete Kelly from Salute Vodka as he gets ready for his first meeting with Sam's. We'll talk to him about some of his concerns and fears going into the meeting. The Saturday morning meeting continues. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. Experience the unique cooling sensation of frozen yogurt. New Dial Frozen Yogurt Body Wash. Wrap your skin in cooling moisture. For skin so refreshingly soft, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. 8th and Walton. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to 8th and Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walton really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We're joined now by Pete Kelly. He's the CEO and founder of Salute Vodka. And you're kind of a big day for you. Big day. This is your Absolutely. very first, today you're going to be meeting with the buyer for the very first time. Correct. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, you know, when we, when we launched this product a year ago, um, we have some characteristics of the brand that we thought would be um, ideal for some of the values that, that Sam's uh, Club has, meaning supporting veterans in a product that's 100% made in the USA. So um, in the back of our mind, we always knew we wanted to get that meeting at some point. And we brought on uh, a, a sales and marketing agency to help us, a company by the name of Fort Clarity. Okay. And they have experience in, in national accounts, so they've really helped prepare us so for this day. Let's talk about vodka because yeah. there are over 300 vodkas I know that Sam's has on the shelf, Sam's and Walmart. And you, you touched a little bit, but what makes yours different? Yeah, it, it's, it's a crowded category and there's a lot of money spent in the category. It's the biggest volume category here in the U.S. But we felt that if we can make an emotional connection with our consumer, based on support of veterans and veterans charities and helping our young men and women transition when they come home and creating a product that is 100% made in the USA. Not just the bottle, not just the package, everything we buy is 100% made in the USA. So we thought those are two characteristics that would resonate with, with the Sam's audience. Okay, so you got the meeting. Yep. <clears throat> what have you done to prepare for this meeting? Well, we, we've worked a lot with our partner for Clarity to, to prep. Um, and and kind of think of uh, the mindset of how we create this product for Sam's. Uh, done a lot of research on pricing, the competitive landscape, what they carry, um, packaging requirements. It's a whole different ball game than, uh, than uh, a grocery or, or any of the other chains we've worked with. So, you know, we, we've, we've prepared and researched uh, on that side to, to make sure that we're ready to go. So what are you nervous about? Um, you know, it's funny. 
some people say you're you're nervous for the meeting. I think a lot of a lot of people are get nervous if there's a yes, you know, because then you, th that's your opportunity, and you got to be ready from a production side. Um, can you meet their pricing requirements? Can you meet their timelines as far as packaging? So those are all things that I think we've prepared for, mm -hmm. but you know, you never know until until you get that opportunity. And it's interesting because as we've talked to different suppliers, and we had T.J. Foltz from. Um, uh, the water company that he actually wanted to get on the shelf water, that's mm -hmm. uh, humankind water. They mm -hmm. won it a couple years ago. Yep. The thing that he said is the marketing leading up to it was obviously a lot, yeah. but once you get yes, that's where it becomes a challenge. So, right. right. I'm just curious, what yeah. have you done in terms? Because obviously, I don't think vodka is like water. Right. Right. There's a process that goes through. Yeah. Do you have the capacity if they say, yeah, we're going to pitch in yeah. 620 clubs? Well, we 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 as I said, we're preparing for a yes. So we've brought on another uh, bottling partner um, to help us in the in the production. So we can produce in two different areas. We can ship from two different areas of the country. So I'd like to think that we are we're ready from a production standpoint um, to uh, to go. Okay, and, and you're you're up against a couple challenges that most CPG companies are not ever going to have to deal with because liquor is a very different animal. I worked with liquor when I was at yeah. Walmart, but you have to go through distributors. So even though you're meeting with Sam's, you can't sell direct to them. Correct. Like many other CPG yeah. companies. So yeah. let's talk about how does that look and what challenges do you see in that area? Well, we got to you know you, if you get a yes from a Sam's or an, another big big box retailer, you got to go back to your distributors and and uh, work in partnership with them on, on the pricing, you know, because it's a different pricing model um, than, than uh, the traditional grocery or, or liquor store chain. So I think that's the first piece of it that uh, we got to collaborate on. And it's, it's a big opportunity for the brand, the supplier, and the distributor. So, you know, the hope is we all work in partnership to make that happen. You know, the, the other challenge that we've got is, from a financial perspective, we donate a dollar bottle to veterans charities. That's 25 to 30 percent of our gross profits right out right out the door, but it's the mission of the company. So right. we're a little bit at a financial disadvantage when you look across the landscape of vodka or even domestic vodka on how we can fund marketing. Um, but it is, you know, connection with our charity and connection with helping veterans is the mission of the of the company. So I want to, we're going to take a break here. Yep. I, mean, I want to I want to, I want to come back to that, but I also want to I want to come back to something else because you're not a distiller. You this is not right. your background. Right. You, you haven't been doing this. You didn't work for right. any type of distiller or any other liquor company. Yeah. So talk quickly about how, where your background comes. Yeah. Your background. So so I I spent 20 years in the marketing agency business with. Uh, big agency holding companies and startup companies. My last venture, I ran my own company. And through that, I, I uh, was introduced to some people that had started a veterans charity. And they were looking for ways to raise funds uh, to help these men and women when they come back. And I really gravitated to the idea. I love the idea. We created a business model and we said, you know what, if we could create a product in the, in the vodka category with an emotional connection, we could get a little share of the market. And it's a huge market. And if you get a little share, we think we can we can win. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the charities that you're doing uh, around the country yep. and specifically some local ones. Awesome. All of that coming up as we continue our conversation with Pete Kelly from Sleep Vodka on Saturday Morning Meeting. Imagine what it would be like if you knew the weather up to a year in advance. What would you do differently? for your business or your life. At Weather Trends, we don't imagine it, we do it. We're a team of meteorologists, mathematicians, and business weather advisors. And we've spent the last 20 years developing a new way to forecast months in advance. We've been studying weather's effect on product sales based on every one degree change in temperature. We can now take your sales data and show you exactly how the weather impacts your business down to a single degree. We're leading the way into a new era in forecasting and a new power in business decisions. And we invite you to join us. Welcome to Weather Trends. I would recommend Ethan Walton to other suppliers because from my experience, talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training, and so 8th and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system. And again, because trainers or suppliers, they know the how and the why, so they become very valuable very quickly. 
Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit BeaverWatershedAlliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Media. We are continuing our conversation with Pete Kelly. He is the CEO and founder of Salute Vodka. Very first meeting with Sam's Club is today. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked a little earlier about how nervous you are about that. But I want to talk now about some of the veterans' charities mm -hmm. that you are specifically tied to and what that looks like. Yep. Um, so our strategy on selecting our charities has been, um, one, you know, we do, we do considerable background on making sure the money that we donate is going to help veterans, not cover administrative costs and, and things like that. So we're pretty selective. We work with uh, a group called Homes for Our Troops. They do, they build homes for disabled veterans all across the country, wonderful organization. Uh, we partner with um, an organization called Farmer Veteran Coalition, and they help create careers in agriculture um, for uh, recent veterans. Uh, Honor Flight is a group we work with. They've got chapters all over the country. A little bit different, they bring World War II veterans back to the memorial. Uh, many of these men and women who served in World War II haven't seen that. And uh, unfortunately, we, we lose eight or 900 of those folks a day. So there's some urgency to get them back to the memorial and, and say thank you. So those are a, a group of organizations we work with. Another one, um, Work Vessels for Veterans. Um, they work in a variety of different uh, fields helping veterans transition, be it finding a, an automobile to drive to college. A lap, they've got a great laptop program uh, that supports veterans uh, when they come back. So um, we try and localize those efforts as much as possible. And speaking of, you, yep. you have one yep. here in Northwest Arkansas yep. that you are supporting. Let's talk yeah. about that. So through um, uh, Farmer Veteran Coalition, uh, they connected us with uh, a, a group called Across the Creek Farm. Uh, Terrell Spencer here in, in uh, Northwest Arkansas. Uh, served in the military, came back, wanted to get into agriculture, started a, his, his own farm, uh, got some support from Farmer Veteran Coalition. We heard about him and we wanted to help Terrell. Um, he needed uh, an, an internship uh, program. We helped fund his internship program to take another veteran and, and help him learn about uh, agriculture and farming. And what we're seeing is a lot of these guys will go through the program and they may even go off and start their own farm. So it's a really neat deal. Um, we, we work with a, a group called um, Veterans Farm down in Jacksonville, Florida and uh, started by Adam Burke, and they're doing some great things. As we move now, and, and you were getting ready, mm -hmm. if you were to, to do this all again, starting your prep and, and talking to other suppliers, somebody who's never been to Sam's or to Walmart, what are some key things that you would tell them to do? Based on, on all the preparation that you've had to do and... I think you gotta go in, you gotta be flexible. You gotta realize that there are 300 other vodkas, and you better be prepared to tell them why yours is different and why it should resonate, you know, with your audience. I think that's the that's the most thing, you know. Sell, not almost present the brand to the buyer and 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 let them take some ownership over, you know, how its success. I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest piece right there. Okay, and then what keeps you up at night? Because obviously this is not your 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 uh, specialty. Marketing has been. So what are some things that, that you kind of worry about? Well, you know, I, I've got a five and a seven year old. They're going to go to college someday. So, you know, those those are things that keep any entrepreneur up when you start a business. Um, you know, we have investors. We, we want to keep them in, engaged in the brand and, and happy. Um, overall, you want to succeed. You know, any, any entrepreneur that goes out and start something and, and you know brand like this it's it's different there's really nothing like it in the marketplace so there's no blueprint for success there you gotta okay. you gotta a lot of trial and error and you gotta be you gotta be ready if someone says no you pick up and learn from it and go on speaking of that, so what if you hear no today what do you or 
What are you? you well, you know what? We'll take our. We'll we'll make the best of it. We'll take our key learnings, and uh, we'll come back and and try and talk to them again, or talk to some other folks that uh, uh, the brand might make sense for. The mission here is to give a dollar back. Yep. The right. One dollar for every bottle sold forever. It's not if. We, when we start to make money, it's not a promotional window over the summer. It's the mission of our company. And there's not a cap. There's no cap. So buy more and you give more. Exactly. All right. So salute the vet veterans, and hopefully you can come back and tell us a very positive story and that you're in, in a bunch of clubs. Pete Love Kelly to. with Salute Vodka, thank you very much for coming in today, and best of luck. Thank you. We will be right back and continue with Saturday Morning Meeting. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Discover our revolutionary lotion-infused body wash, New Dial Vitamin Boost, and wrap your skin in nourishing softness. For healthy, soft skin, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current. Accurate. Relevant. Taught by suppliers. For suppliers. 8th and Walton. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. I would recommend 8th and Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training and so 8th and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system and again because trainers were suppliers, they know the how and the why so they become very valuable very quickly. Our thanks to Pete Kelly and today's panelists, and as always, we appreciate you taking the time to join us. Next week, our featured guest will be Teresa Warren of 8th and Walton. And a special announcement for suppliers, 8th and Walton and the Harvest Group have teamed up and developed a brief supplier survey that will be emailed to suppliers on March 16th for completion by March 31st. In June, those who responded will be invited to a walkthrough of the results. To be certain that you receive a survey, please email us Saturday at 8 walton.com and send us your request. All responses are confidential, of course. I'm Derek Ridenauer, and from all of us here at Saturday Morning Meeting, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Eighth and Walton the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. Eighth and Walton. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to Eighth and Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walton really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Ethan Walton, 
the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. 8th and Walton.